Hey riders, welcome to another video in our Adventure Motorcycle Gear Series. I'm Eric Lang with Ride Adventures. I've been guiding and riding motorcycle tours around the world for over 10 years now. I've seen lots of ways that people modify their motorcycles. So today I want to show you some of the best modifications you can make to your adventure motorcycle. It's going to help you from the standpoint of ergonomics, comfort, safety, and performance. So there's no shortage of online catalogs and part suppliers to make your bike and customize it the way that you want. And where do you begin with all these options? And you know, are you going to be the kind of rider that actually takes your adventure bike beyond Starbucks and McDonald's like we often joke about? Are you actually going to use it on the dirt roads and the gravel and the rocks and the situations where protection will come into play? So those are the decisions to make and I just want to walk around and show you this great bike that I'm honestly struggling to get rid of. Uh, from the standpoint that it represents a time when BMW quality standards were a bit better than they are now. And uh, this 2012 BMW R1200 GS Adventure, just such a great bike. I've got all the parts on it. It fits me exactly the way I want to. So, you know, starting with the front here, you know, obvious protection items that you should consider uh, would be a headlight guard like this. It's removable, it's made by Alt Rider. But when you look at the cost of adding a, a part like that compared to replacing the glass BMW headlight that's behind it, and you think about all the rocks that can pop up from the tires in front of you, from cars passing by and flinging things off the road, there's a lot of opportunity and we have seen it where headlights do get cracked and it's an expensive item to replace. So putting a little money into protection up here, just the same in this case, the oil cooler uh, guard just below, uh, same thing, rocks pop up and break the fins of the oil cooler an expensive part to replace or you can end up with a leak on the side of the road uh, just easy little things to add on again sparkling we're talking about here the fun of adding these parts to your bike is you know an expensive endeavor at times but you know just showing you again some options that you might want to consider here for your bike so the original position that BMW gave us and the moderate adjustability with rotating the handlebars was pretty good for me, but I'm a little taller than average. I definitely want to be able to have the handlebars in the position that makes sense for me when I'm in the standing position, but also be comfortable seated as well. So these Rocks bar risers utilize the original handlebar mounts and actually then rise, as you can see, I think these ones go up about two inches, giving you two points of rotation and adjustability to go forward and back and rotate the bar like that. And just with a little bit of time and trying and riding and coming back and making adjustments, those rocks bar risers give you the ultimate in versatility and adjustability for those handlebars. So great option to add there. Um, well, you can see a GPS mount, you know, GPS or whether you're using a smartphone like we do more and more these days, an important point would be to consider how and where you're mounting it. So hopefully it's up and high and not down low. For example, if you were to put it right down there, think about how far you're going to take your eyes off the road just to check your GPS. You know, none of us actually pulls over every time we want to look at the GPS. Sometimes it's nice just to be able to glance down and get a good view of it. But you know, a long extension bar like that, a Ram double socket U-bolt mount makes sense. It's I barely have to take my eyes off of the road in front of me to see what's up on the screen right there. So simple thing here, these are called Beamer Buddies, I think. They're a, a simple foam and Velcro kind of an add-on to the grip right there that uh, make it a little bit larger. You know, if you have a bigger hand, sometimes that bigger grip and the extra padding that it in includes for you, it's gonna be a nice enhancement for a long day, a long ride, or a multi-day adventure where rocks and pounding and things like that can add up and take a toll on, on your hands. So. There's a simple little add-on right there. We've got the Kaoko from South Africa, the cruise control, like a cruise control lock here. Some of the newer bikes come with more push button controls and electronics and whatnot. But this simple device was a way of adding, you can rotate it and add a little bit of tension to take some of the pressure and the, the need for your wrist and your muscles to hold that throttle in position. So sometimes you can actually lock it into place, take your hand off and shake it out a little bit while you're riding. Uh, be very careful, obviously, if you're doing that, do it slowly and don't go full lock right away like some people do, but a great option to give your wrist, your right hand especially, a break sometimes. You know, we've got these adjustable Wunderlich front brake lever and matching clutch lever on the other side. You can adjust both the throw and the distance that I have to reach to, to reach out and pull it in. Also making sure that I'm not pulling it in so far that it blocks up against the 
the pads and my and the knuckles of my grip and be, you know, sandwiches between the lever and the grip itself so that it stops the lever. I can put this one far enough out that I have good full braking ability and no obstructions. So a bike like this did come with some original protection, protective parts. You know, this is an original piece right here and it went down to here. But as you look at the way that uh, they configured this particular protection item and the probability of a bike ending up on its side as they often do, um, really this, you know, and this is included too with the original bike, but this was added because this really on its own wouldn't be doing much you know, if there's a rock that you go down or whatever here, this is all expensive stuff to have to replace and, or deal with roadside leaks or ending your trip because now you've got damage to the valve cover there. You can actually damage more internal parts, which gets very expensive inside an engine by not having, you know, it properly protected. So this was a piece uh, made by Adventure Designs. It just simply bolted onto the existing original parts right there and just add that extra level of protection for, again, one of the most obvious needs you could ever have, which is a bike going down on its side. This piece right here was a kind of a phenolic, I'm not sure what you call it, a plastic or whatever, made by Packmeister. Yeah, it's a little bit faded, but again, it's protecting the fuel tank to some extent. If you go down on that side, there's rocks, there's things, there's sticks that can get through there. And well, this should add some protection to help make sure you don't puncture a fuel tank, which is another very expensive item to have to replace. As with many other adventure bikes, this one did come with its own original skid plate, which was okay. It's just sort of a simple little aluminum. Adding a more ru rugged and rigid one by Alt Rider. Another, you know, it's a, something you have to buy, but it's super satisfying when you're out there on the roads or the trails and a rock does pop up and you hear that loud banging noise. You're gonna know that your investment was well spent to protect that ultimately expensive part of the motorcycle, the engine again. So cracking an engine case, versus just spending a few hundred dollars on good protection definitely works out well in the long run. Going back a little further on the bike, you know, the foot peg, uh, the rear brake, excuse me, that BMW put this bike out with originally is pretty nice. You know, you've got your adjustability as far as putting it in a position that you want to be able to reach it to, but this little lever right here, um, this folding piece that I just moved is to allow you to go from the seated position to the standing. You know, if you're going to spend the bulk of your day in the standing position, look at the angle of your leg and your foot as it naturally sits on the bike. When you're in the standing position, you'll see that it makes sense to have the contact point there a little bit higher so you don't have to reach down so far and get it. So it's actually a really good original lever that BMW put on there. I saw no, saw no need to change it. Um, similarly with the foot pegs, they're a good wide foot peg. I think it might have come with some uh, rubber foot blocks that I removed. Remove those foot blocks because rubber, when you get them wet and muddy, gets very, very slippery. And the last thing you need is to have your foot slip off while you're in a riding situation. But uh, you know, you can look at other parts that are out there, pivot pegs that actually articulate with your foot as you're sitting and standing and moving around a little bit on the bike. But another important point though is that these are nice and wide, you know. If you're gonna do any standing, having a real skinny, narrow uh, foot peg can really add up to having all your weight sort of uh, balancing on what is a, like a little spindle, you know. Having something wide like that works great for me and I haven't needed to change that, that part at all. A couple of little extra brake cylinder protection items right here. One by Alt Rider. Good idea to have, just, you know, not really expensive, but again, if you go down and uh, happen to damage any of those braking systems, it's gonna be expensive to replace, not to mention possibly ending your ride for that day. Um, the Machine Art Moto mud sling right there. Yeah, the, the BMW came with fender to protect the bike and keep mud off of it that was original but this is a larger bigger one uh, that keeps more mud off of again expensive componentry you do want to try and keep things like your your uh, rear shock and your different components and all your swing arm pivot points it's best to keep them as clean as possible because uh, seals and things like that do wear out as you continue to get dirt and grime and grit in there so I do have a seat it's not on here right now but uh, Adding an aftermarket seat is a great enhancement. It, uh, I went with a Corbin setup 
Uh, they've been making great aftermarket seats for years. They're much firmer in general in the Corbins that I've written than these BMW's original seats. The original seats, a lot of us agree, is it's just too soft. It's using too much of the tissues in your body and the muscles to support you instead of like a firmer contact point allows you to use those sit bones. And in general, it just makes for a, a longer riding day ended up being much more comfortable on a firmer seat than these real soft ones. So definitely a good enhancement for your passenger as well to have an aftermarket seat. The luggage boxes, you know, you do have options. In this case, I uh, went with the hard case aluminum. So, you know, they fit right onto the existing framework that came with the BMW GS Adventure. You know, you can also put soft luggage on there. There's lots of options for both soft luggage. You'll find probably a little more versatile. It can go from bike to bike and not have specific hardware and locks and framework that it needs to fit into. But you know, we've done other videos. Make sure to check our Adventure Motorcycle Gear uh, series where we talk about the comparisons of hard luggage versus soft and that'll help you make a decision there. Walking around the back, just a simple safety item, you know, there's all these distractions on the road, people out there paying attention to things they shouldn't. And uh, if you can add something like hyper lights to the back of your bike right there, not only do you have the rear brake light, but a flashing you know, alert to make very clear that you are ahead of them and they stop for you or slow down at least is important. So a simple option to install like that bolts right onto and connects to your existing electrical system. Very easy way to add a little safety enhancement. Um, tires obviously are a thing that, you know, the bikes don't often come with uh, the tires that are appropriate for the riding that you're going to do. Okay, again, again, if you're just going from home to Starbucks back and forth, you probably are fine with the 80% pavement and 20% dirt tires that come with the motorcycle. But in the case of wanting to do more adventurous riding and get out into the dirt and off pavement, having something like these Hyden K60 Scouts have just been a great performance tire for us. They're, they're durable, they stick great do everything that we need them to. We've had them in, in operation for over 10 years now in the different rental fleets that we're operating with. So um, great option there. Another item by Alt Rider that we put on this was the potentiometer guard, excuse me, the potentiometer. You know, this before the current designs now, this was still a, a tighter space to work within between the front of your leg and the engine and everything. And it was pretty possible to uh, bump and alter or damage the potentiometer. Um, to just protect that uh, fairly delicate piece as a little add-on we have there. The foot peg, um, you know, it wasn't too bad to begin with from BMW, but you get out into these uh, soft sand situations and dirt and mud and whatnot where putting the bike on its side stand can result in it sinking down and you walk back to your bike and there it is lying on its side. Instead you can add a bit of a, you know, a size enhancement by a kickstand footprint adding on like that, another piece by Alt Rider there. The shift lever, the original, again from BMW was okay. I wear a size 14 motocross boot when I'm riding. It's a little big, a little too much to fit under the original. So while the original did come with the ability to take this off the spline and adjust with the pinch bolt there, adjust the position up and down, the original did not allow me to adjust the length. And this was an important option to have. So I could again, bring it out a little bit further, gives me a little bit more room to fit my my boot beneath the shift lever there and not miss a shift you know getting something like this set up just right for you and your riding situation and your gear that you're wearing is important for also being able to shift in the standing position you know sitting all the time that's fine but when you're up on a ride and want to really keep going and not have to not having to sit down just to shift gears again is pretty nice so work with that and uh, adjust it the way you think to uh, make it most versatile for your needs so the BMW Boxer engine isn't the only one that has exhaust exposed like this in the front. And so adding, these are made by Alt Rider. It's a simple exhaust header guard, I guess you could say. It goes on with a couple of steel hose clamps. All these years later, seven years later, it's still just fine holding up and uh, you don't damage and dent your exhaust in that sense. So um, simple little add on there. It might be silly to talk about saving weight on a bike that weighs over 500 pounds, but really when it does come time to replace your battery, it does happen. Going with one of the lithium options like this one made by Shirai, great way to save just some simple weight. For a very minimal extra cost, you get what turns out to be a greater cranking ability. You will hear the difference, especially on a big engine like this when 
uh, you put that lithium battery in there and push the button and it'll turn the bike over, it'll turn the engine over more rapidly. And again, when you stand in the store and hold an old lead acid battery compared to one of these lithium ones like that for the negligible cost difference at this point, save the weight, you'll see it often cuts the battery weight in half or, or more, I think in some cases. So one last item you might want to add to your bike would be an aftermarket exhaust, a muffler. This one by Remus saves a lot of weight. You know, the OEM mufflers that come on these bikes are stuffed with steel wool. They're very heavy. You can almost cut the weight of that in half, some, in some cases even more, with an aftermarket pipe. And also these run a lot cooler. It helps your engine run cooler. The contact that you would actually make with this stays cooler. You can actually ride this for quite a while and still touch it. So that's a... Nice point in not burning luggage straps or things that might accidentally con come in contact with your muffler. So in addition to all that, of course, with an aftermarket pipe, you usually get a slightly throatier, better sounding bike. You be the judge, but aftermarket usually sounds a little bit better. So let us know in the comments below, what are the things you've done to your bike? This sparkling activity, it's a fun way to spend money. Uh, there's almost no limit to the money you can spend on your bike. So what are the things that you've done and what do you have questions about? Let us know. So thanks for watching. Come again and let us know what we can do to help you get out there and riding more and seeing more of this world.